The following announcement has been paid for by the New World Order. Take three wrestling podcast. It is Thursday night. We are six days away from two thirds of this episode of the show being in frigid Los Angeles, California. Yeah, what the fuck is that about? Frigid. Like, is it cold out there? When we, land we look, I looked at the weather. Uh, the day we land, it's fifty eight. And forty five. Like that's disgusting. First off, Florida we've boy. Been de- oh, hold on, frigid to us because we've been dealing with eighty five, seventy four. Yeah, I, I, California's supposed to be hot. That's no, the thing. I told you, California's supposed to be sunny and beautiful. It's not supposed to be hot. I just want to first off tell you, Florida boys, to go fuck yourselves. That <laughs> to you seems frigid. Uh, because literally four days ago, our wind chill here was eleven. So fuck off fuck all the way off uh the beautiful forecast for boyton beach florida tomorrow 84 69 um i had a you know what there could have been a joke there but i'm just gonna let it ride um (laughs) hey oh tomorrow actually here is not supposed to be too bad i think let me it's uh, not too bad i want to know how cold i'd be 67 i'd be cold 67 here tomorrow but then it it cools off again oh wait no that was what the fuck why is this still giving me weather for today that was that's 20 minutes from being done? <laughs> 51 tomorrow, 55 on Saturday, 64 on Sunday. And that's the warmest it's going to be for a couple weeks. It looks and like. remind me, you live in Oshkosh, Pennsylvania. Bagosh, Pennsylvania? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Just just west of Oshkosh, Bagosh, Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. Uh, the current weather forecast for the first three days of our trip to beautiful Los Angeles. 58 with a low of 44, 60 with a low of 43, and 68 with a low of 47. Now, where are you compared to blue balls? Um, I'm yeah. uh, I'm actually I'm actually about 30 minutes west of blue balls. Oh wait, what's the other one? There's it's blue balls. There's intercourse, and- intercourse paradise and blue ball all uh, within. So, wh- where are you in, in relation to intercourse? It well, it's about West. the same because it literally. Like Paradise, Intercourse, and Blue Ball are like literally like right all right next to each other. So I'm about, I'm about half an hour uh, and, north and west of there. And how far away from you is your mother's a whore, Pennsylvania? Oh, that's uh, that that's up there. That's up there in the, the pretty north part. That's, that's, oh, pretty, okay. that's up there. A couple is that, hours. is that is that mildly located right next to the home of Sidney Crosby, that Canadian pompous brick? Yeah, not too far from there. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> Fuck that guy. All right, so our show for this week, um, we got some fun stuff lined up. Uh, Jim is bringing the what should close night one discussion. Joseph has uh, three things you want to see that take place post WrestleMania 39. And I have, because it's March, it's college basketball season. We didn't have a show last week. I figured we'd get the brackets going, baby. It's WrestleMania main event bracket. So 40, trust me, you don't have to tell me about brackets on a podcast right now because we are in the heart of it over uh, on over on 3CT. This this would have been the time where if I would have thought about this, I would have just had you get the soundbite of Dickie V be like, oh, baby, he's a diaper dandy. <laughs> just the whole just just play that repeatedly every time some upset goes on. Um, so over my week of work, uh, I ranked all 41 WrestleMania main events from one to 41 in the bracket. Uh, I have the paper bracket sitting here right in front of me um, that we're going to go over in a little while. Spoiler alert for those of you at home. The number 41 seed is Lawrence Taylor versus Bam Bam Bigelow because it is the worst main event oh, in WrestleMania boy. history. <laughs> you, oh, if you want to if you want to argue with me, uh, you can at me. That's at They Call Me Burn. No, at no. The show. If you want to argue with that, you can um, take your social media account and delete it because nobody, you don't deserve to have your voice heard by anybody. So how yeah. much of that are we doing? Uh, I would like to at least get to the Sweet 16, if if it depending on time. Okay. Yeah, we can probably do that because, like, honestly, like a lot of these, I don't, I don't know that there'll probably be a ton of discussion. Not until we get into like 16 slash eight. 
Yeah. Like I yeah. think I think once we get to 16 8 that might be. So we'll we'll try to get to at least the sweet 16 and then we'll kind of use that as a launching pad to start the show on Wednesday before we get into the perfect. That's perfect. Discussions because breaking news um I can formally announce this now. Uh, next week's show will not be recorded on Thursday night. It will be recorded <laughs> on Wednesday night um, because of the fact that myself and Joe will be in, La- in Los Angeles. Plus, the 3CT guys will have a special two-hour-long show themselves on Thursday I don't know night. If we're so, in shape to do a two-hour show again, but we're going to give it our best. There's a there's a shape joke in there somewhere, and we're just going to go ahead. And- I sit in this chair. <laughs> I, I oh, sit in this chair for uh, how many hours on a seven on a Thursday night? So yeah, I'm I'm more than prepared for. So yeah, uh, we're, we're doing a big uh, we're doing a big mega so uh, they're doing week. a big one. We're gonna have a big one on Wednesday. Uh, we will be joined. Shut up. We will be joined for that show by uh, everybody's favorite uh, Binford Toolbox. Who? Ernest DJ Christian. Allegedly, I have no idea who they are. Um, I, I have it on good authority. Allegedly, uh, thank you, Jim. That I uh recorded a show with him last night where we previewed the over under win total uh for Major League Baseball. If you listen that. to that episode, I'm going to apologize in advance if you're a Philadelphia Phillies fan because I definitely picked you to win the World Series and Reese Hoskins Blues ACL. Oh. Come on, I mean, come the fuck on. Dude, I saw that. Cancel spring training. Games don't matter. Cancel yeah. it. Cancel it. Lock cancel it. World Baseball Classic 2.0. Cancel it. No, literally, I, I, I picked Phillies over, I think it was Blue Jays in the World Series. I mean, here's the deal. And though. then he blows his ACL out. I'm like, I mean, because like, like, I was talking to Matt about it. And we'll we'll get to the, 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 the actual podcast topic here in a second. Yeah. But like, Hoskins is not the best fielder. No. So, like, the Phillies actually might get better defensively. Now they got to replace like a 30 home run guy. But I said, look, there's going to be some dumb idiot team out there that the Phillies, because the Phillies, I swear, like the Eagles and the Phillies front office, they like fucking trick teams into doing dumb things. So they're going to trick somebody to fucking trade a a fucking DH or something. Well, what I, what I was telling Ernest, because Ernest texted me about it as soon as the, the news broke that it was the ACL and he was like, how many wins, plus or minus do you think that is? And I said, depends on what Philadelphia decides to do. If it's move Kyle Schwarber to first base where he played a little bit when he was in Boston and go get a DH, it's a, it's probably a two to four, you know, war, you know, wins above replacement kind of thing. You know, if it's move Alec Bohm to first and put Ed, Edmundo Sosa at third, it's, you know, because Sosa is a better defender, it's two to four. You know, if it's, move Bowman and put Josh Harrison at third base. It might be six to eight because Josh Harrison's like 37 years old trying to play third base. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest too. Like six to eight, that might be the difference between division and wild card. And you can still, yeah, but let's not also forget. That run. Let's also not forget. You don't have to rush into go getting a DH get serviceable playing time from someone. Cause you move Kyle to first base. You can put Bryce Harper at, at DH when he comes back from his fucking injury. Cause you're not going to want to rush him back to the field. He ain't lying. So right. that's enough baseball talk. You can check the you can check the rest of that out on the pitch with Matt or uh, over on the over under prediction on the yeah, I gotta podcast to network. Let's we'll see if he's gonna record another one of those coming up here soon. I think we're start are we starting with my topic? Yes. All right, so let's uh let's kick it off here. Um, you know, it did uh officially get announced that um official uh that Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn will be taking on um the Usos for the undisputed WWE. Tag Team Championship at WrestleMania. I feel like um, we predicted that. And I mean, I mean, here's the deal. Like that's kind of been that's kind of been the thought here for a while, especially when Sammy didn't win the undisputed uh, WWE Universal Heavyweight Championship of the Galactic Galactic, <laughs> Galactic Championship. Uh, so, you know, so really, it, 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 it's kind of a tale of, of two matches here. Of, of what's going to happen with the main event. Um, cause we've, we've kind of all been settled in on, I, I believe that, that Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair was going to be your main event, uh, kind of in the, the promos leading up towards this, they've even kind of hinted that it is going to be the main event. Um, but now a lot of wrestling fans want it to be 
KO and Sammy taking on the Usos because look, it has been we we've we've talked about it at length. The bloodline, it's the the best story arguably that's ever been told in the history of this great sport. Um and and KO and Sammy, their best friends, fight forever. KO or Sammy turned his back on KO. They had the big embrace on on Monday. One of the biggest pops I can remember on an episode of Monday Night Raw in fuck a long ass time. Um, so I'll lend to you guys first. Um, what match to you should main event night one WrestleMania? You haven't said anything in about 45 minutes. Feel free to start this one off because y'all were fucking talking Chinese for the last 10 minutes. Like, Fucking Ying Yang Hong getting traded for fucking five cattle uh-huh. and reparations and bullshit. Uh-huh. What the fuck uh-huh. anything uh-huh. meant? The, the views of Joe Lopez only reside in those views of Joe Lopez and not the views of Joe Lo- of Big Jim or Mike Brenner. Thank you. I just don't. I like baseball. Like, okay, it's a sport. It's a thing. Whatever. You know, I, I fuck with football. It's a sport that has wide receivers and tight ends. And as a gay man, I appreciate both of those things. Now, Joe, this and uh, this is an honest question. Because there's a lot of female friends I've had in my life that said men in baseball pants are hot. Is, it, is, that, is that accurate? Okay, so it's that thing where... So it's not universal. Okay. It's not like... Any guy can throw on a pair of baseball pants. He's trying to say Daniel Vogelbach, no matter what kind of pants he wears, is not attractive. I don't know who that is. I'll show okay. you after the okay. show. But like that's but like like for like not every guy could throw on a pair of baseball pants and instantaneously become hot. There are certain things where that does work, like police uniforms. Like and, and uniforms in general, like there are a lot of uniforms, like scrubs, like Hold on. scrubs and stuff. So you found the cop from the village people attractive because he was wearing a cop suit? No, but why do you think he was wearing a cop suit? Because they were the village people. They oh, were just they, all wearing different costumes. No, they were all in uniforms because that's what makes that Hold on. Hot. Hold on. Big Chief steal a base? Yes. That's not was, a uniform. That's what he wears. He was a chief. But that's what he wears. It's not a that's uniform. Not, he doesn't wake up in the morning and go, you know what? I'm going to wear my uniform. chief outfit today. He does. No, he wears it all the time. He's a chief. Yeah, because it's his uniform. Because that's his attire. That's a, what, what do you think a uniform is? You get to pick if you wear a uniform. His chief attire is what he wears every day. That's what I'm getting at. A police officer chooses, does he want to wear basketball shorts today or does he want to put on his police uniform? Like, if he has to go to work, he has to put his police I would, uniform I would, I would just like to personally apologize to the listeners of Take Three Wrestling Podcast. It's <laughs> my fault. This is my fault. Continue. <laughs> okay, Rhea Ripley uh, tag team go. Me? Yeah, you, I had started with you because you decided oh. to go Ching Chang Wing Wang over here. Forgot. It's not my fault. Oh, it's not my fault. Y'all were talking about. I let you. I let you have your straight moment. I should talk for five minutes about RuPaul's Drag Race right now. That's oh. what I should do. You, I should be like, you know what? You that, be copywritten that, so that fast. Bitch spice. That bitch Spice did not deserve to go home that week. Her sister Sugar, she should have gone home. So is which one? Which one is Sugar? Which one is Spice? Charlotte Flair or Rhea Ripley? I'm trying to figure this out. You know they are twins. Actually, really. Oh, I dropped my weed pen. Shocker. Oh. Nope. Nope. That. That. Nope. Mm. <laughs> Shut up. Nope. Mm-mm. So anyway, the power of Christ compels you. <laughs> Just. <laughs> oh my God! Did you see that joke I sent you guys on from TikTok? Holy oh. hell, Mike! Did you, see, did you see that joke I sent you? Uh, wait, uh, wait, wait. Was it the one you like sent as like a DM on TikTok? Yes. No, no, oh, no, it wasn't. No, I sent no because I sent Jim oh, you one said, that I thought like, okay. he'd find funny only, so okay. I sent it directly to him. Okay. No, it was the joke. It was the 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 dinosaur yes. hand puppet, and he goes, "What do you get when you cross a Jewish person? <laughs> Christianity." Oh, oh, oh no! It's so good. Oh. <laughs> it's so bad. It's good. All right. Um. So, okay. My mark. My argument is going to be multi-layered, like an onion, like an ogre. So, how did Shrek and Doki just become a part of this show? Here's my I, thing. I don't fucking know how we got anywhere so far in this show. 
I feel like personally, I want to see the tag title match main event night one because for all intents and purposes, that to me might be the most excited I've ever been for a announced WrestleMania match. Like we've been going to WrestleManias since 2011 I have not been as hyped for a, a single match as I am for this one. There's been some matches where I was like excited going into it. And there have been matches that I've certainly loved having seen live after the fact. But this one, the story, the everything about it, the fact that, look, I'm, I've told this story before, so I'm going to say it in a really short form. 2007, I started, I fell out of love with wrestling. One of the things that got me back into it was going to a Ring of Honor show in New York, one of the first ones I had gone to in years. And it had two main events on the show. And the first of those two main events was the Briscoe Brothers, Jay and Mark, R.I.P. Mark, uh, Jay, sorry, uh, taking on... What the fuck? The, was, I'm allowed to slip. This just took a... <laughs> yeah, thanks, Jim. Taking on Kevin Steen and El Generico. So, like, literally, this tag team helped rekindle my love of pro wrestling. And now I'm going to get to see them win the tag team championship in front of, what, like 80,000 people or 70,000, uh, 90,000? I, I would say anywhere between eighty to 85,000. Yeah, I like, guess. like it, this is... This is just like when Brian won the title at WrestleMania 30 for me, except that one didn't feel guaranteed. This one feels guaranteed. This one feels like I'm going to get my moment. And the thing is, I also feel like we're guaranteed to get a five-star, six-star, eight-star, whatever rating you want to give it match. It's not going on in the Tokyo Dome. Well, <laughs> I'm saying from, from, from me – I'm expecting this to be. I'm expecting on Thursday when we come back and we record a show that Joe's is like, I give that match six gay flags. At least. Honestly, <laughs> I, it will take a lot for this to not be possibly the greatest tag team wrestling match of all time. Wow. I'm sorry. I'm going to stop you there. Just go back and watch the December show and tell me how it's going to beat the Briscoes versus FTR in the dog collar match. I just did it, it. I don't see how it beats that, but I get what you're saying. I, it's the story for me. Like, I mean, like this is right. This, I, I get what you're saying. It, there's this more than more than Cody and Roman. This is the culmination of the bloodline story. In a match. I would say that this is the culmination of Sammy's story in the bloodline. The whole bloodline, the culmination is when well, inevitably yes. it implodes. Yeah. But I'm not, I, I think you're going to see some of that. Here. No, I see. I think the cracks in the foundation start. The and actual. Let's, let's, full let's be honest, too. The bloodline story is at, um, almost, if not as much about Jey Uso as it is about Roman Reigns. Correct. Oh, for sure. Like, w without question. Like, Roman, because like I started watching, and w, credit to WWE and their video team for this. They have a playlist. Well, it's not even a playlist. It is just like a documentary film. Let's call it what it is. On their YouTube page of the entire Bloodline story dating back to SummerSlam 2020 in the Thunderdome when Roman came back and attacked... Um, the fiend Bray Wyatt. Oh, it was the fiend? I forgot it was. And fiend. literally every every moment beyond that, and like, yeah, Roman obviously had to come back and be different than he was before. Mm -hmm. But the the bloodline story doesn't really begin until Jey Uso starts saying like, "Why can't this be me? Like, why is it always about you? Like, yeah. why can't it, I be it, the guy?" It doesn't really start until he's forced to acknowledge. Roman. Well, yeah, but it, it, it the, the match came about because Jay won the number one contender spot, mm -hmm. and then he stands like toe to toe with Roman, and is like, "Why can't I be the dude, right? That is recognized as the person that provides for the fa for the for our family, mm -hmm. and then you know, again in the Hell in a Cell and all of that. So, like the the bloodline is is Jay's story as much as it is Roman. So I I get what Joe said, but yeah, I get that it's. It's personal because of what it reconnected you back to wrestling. 
And see, so here's my thing too. So there's the personal aspect to it. There's the storyline aspect to it. There's a lot. There's a lot of reasons why I think this belongs as the main event. If it's not the main event, if it if it's not, how do I say this? Even if it's not the last match that occurs on night one, it's the main event. It Please. is the match that I think almost everyone is looking forward to right. more than anything else on that night one card. Cody and Roman might be the only match that is above it in terms of anticipation. And we know that's not on the same night. Are you, so, are we sure about that? I don't know what other match. I mean, I'm just saying you could put this as the opener on night two. You're not necessarily saying that like, it hasn't been set in stone that this match is on night one. And so is. Oh, fair. Okay. And so show, is match. show for you. Cause I know you said that, that you would choose this match as your main event, but if, if not the main event of night one, where would you put this match? If it's not the main event, I think you put it midway through night one. Okay. In the spot where you've seen, quite frankly, most of the best matches in WrestleMania history. Most of them jump in that middle spot. You, you know, Triple H and Undertaker Hell in a Cell was in the middle of that show. Uh Friggin' <clears throat> Sean and Razor, WrestleMania 10, that's the middle of that show. You know, you, you can go through every WrestleMania and almost every single one. I mean, let's one, be honest, Flair Michaels, not a great match, but the was moment, event the moment, show, yeah. like, is, is, like, that's been one of the wildest things. Is I'm on, I've been watching through, and not, not as detailed, but I've had them on in my office while I've been working, and, and I have yeah. one on right now. The amazing thing that I that I've found is, yeah, in a lot of these manias, especially over the probably the past, um, you know, well, I'm currently at 32, but from like probably about 21 or 21 to 32, a lot of the best matches occur in the middle of the card. Right. So, like, I, I could see a world where this is middle of night one steals the show it's the match everyone's talking about it doesn't matter that it didn't end the night and if you want to put charlotte and Rhea at in the closing match on night one if that you know if it looks good for them because then they have a woman's match in the closing match on the show if you know for whatever reason that they want like look i love Rhea. charlotte's great in the ring I think they're going to have a banger of a match. The last time they had a match at WrestleMania, it was great. It unfortunately wasn't in front of any fans. I think they're going to have an incredible match. I'm excited for it. I hope it also Rio may wins. have gotten a lot of married men between the ages of 18 to 35 almost murdered by their wives, but I digress. Yeah, okay. But, like, the storyline <laughs> hasn't exactly been amazing here. This hasn't been the best built match. I there's, there's not, most of the women's storylines for WrestleMania have kind of been weak, to be honest. Like like there's not really been a lot going on with Bianca and Asuka either. And the six woman tag is like it kind of wrote itself. Like you're just kind of in cruise control to get yeah, there. Bianca, Bianca Asuka has been a, a very strange build. It, yeah, like there's no feud. There's literally no feud. And I get it. Like she won a chance at the belt, but then like you know. I don't know what you do with that. You know, like you got to find something to do with that. Otherwise it's what we've been getting. And it's not yeah, actually I think, that. I think that, I think that feud takes off after the match, which yeah, is possible. Cause I think, cause I think Oscar uses the mist or whatever to win the title and then basically finishes the full fledged heel turn. And then that leads to Bianca chasing her for the next yeah, couple months, true. but that's which true. would be great, which honestly, <clears throat> that would be awesome. But I'm just saying like, same thing with it's, Charlotte yeah, and Rhea. It's, it's like you're not – there hasn't been a lot of really great build on this. It's almost more just like – it's almost like if Tony Khan booked the way he books Dynamite with like making these like quote-unquote dream matches but literally did it like four weeks in advance and then just had – then it just reminded us every week that it was going to be a dream match in three weeks. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, like there, there's no storyline here. And like I've given – Triple H and his creative team in WWE, all of the credit for having some fantastic storylines and doing a lot of really great build. And it feels like we got to the finish line with some of the WrestleMania stuff and it just wasn't there, you know? And it really was, it was just like, okay, well, 
Like, like, it, like, I almost think you would have had more of a storyline if you had Rhea and Bianca as the match. You know, like they, they at least that would have been a new interaction where they never fought each other before. They never feuded before. One was already clearly a heel. One was already clearly a face. Like, you know, Rhea and Charlotte are both heels. It's kind of a weird thing, like from the jump based on that. Like same thing with Bianca and Asuka, actually, you know, like just in the opposite direction. It just, it's, it, it, it's been lacking for me. So I, it's almost disappointing to see a match that's lacking in its build end up as the main event. But I'd get it if it did. All right. Mike, what would you have main event? I would, put, I would put the women's match as the main event. She wins the Royal Rumble. She gets a shot at the main event. Um, I think that's what I've kind of sold myself on. Um, I, I don't, I'm not going to say that the, the build has been as bad as the gentleman to my right is per- portraying. You know, the interactions between Charlotte and Dominic Mysterio have been fun. Um, it's helped build that because to be honest with you, Rhea Ripley is, has, and never has been the greatest promo of all time. She's gotten better. She's gotten increasingly better, but heel heat Dominic Mysterio uh, is finding every way in his power to make sure that Rhea Ripley gets booed, even though we know that she won't because she is the one that has to portray the main heel in this match. Um, They're going to have a great match. If it's anything, if it's half as good as the match in in the pandemic, uh, it's a fine way to close night one. Um, But the reality of the situation is, and I said this on 3CT in the chat, I will say it here. If it's not the tag title match closing it, you open the fucking show with it. Here it is, boys. Here's the fucking measuring stick. Go fucking beat it. Yeah, you you know, you put it in the middle of the you put it in the middle of the show. You, you potentially run into the same problem that you ran into at WrestleMania 35 with Kofi Mania. You burnt the fucking crowd out. You get to that triple threat match, first women's main event. Nobody gave a fuck. Yeah. So how do you how do you avoid that? I, I get it. Smaller show. It's not going to be as long, so you're not going to burn out the crowd as quickly. Um, but put the match that's going to blow and set the expectation for this show. Put it Put it in launch position. Rip it. Go right from the very beginning. Start with the bloodline, end with the bloodline. You know, if you're not going to main event with both of them, you put this match to lead off. You put Rollins in and Logan Paul in the middle, and then you, you close with the women's match. You start night two, kind of the same way they did after the Bianca Sasha, where like the opening match for the next night was the next women's title match. Start with start with Becky and Asuka night two. Put, you know, um, What's what's another like? You put another marquee matchup in the middle, and you close with with Cody Roman. Yeah, I I'm at I'm at the point now where putting this match, unless you open night two with it, and you just cap Sunday with the Bloodline, which I wouldn't have a problem with either. But if this match ain't closing night one, I'm opening it either of the nights because that's your measuring stick. Go beat it. Like you want to have, you want to put an eight star match on this show, lead off with it because then you give yourself chances to, to culminate and have even bigger moments to cap, to captivate after that. But if you put this in the middle, I think you're almost killing the opportunity of Charlotte and, and Rhea to be a great closing because everyone's going to go, man, remember what happened an hour ago when Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens won the tag titles but it would have been real something here if the fucking pyro was going off and that's how they ended night one. <laughs> It'd yeah. be a lot of what if. Yeah. No, I agree, man. Like for me, I I think you keep I think you keep Charlotte and Rhea as as the uh the end of night one. And I think it's because um for for uh, what the last six seven years we've kind of been told that the wwe women's division is the four horse women's division uh this is an opportunity for the company to signify a change at the top and i get like bianca's bianca's been there but like this this is a moment this is a moment for Rhea, and not that kevin owens and Sami Zayn don't deserve this moment but I think I think their their pop, their moment, their achievement 
is going to be felt wherever it is on the card. Um, so I like, and they've kind of been telling us that that, that the women are going to mean event. So I don't, I don't think you should necessarily change that. Um, if you like, if WWE couldn't have seen that, like the crowd would have wanted the tag match to main event. Um, you know, it's kind of their own fault, but like you've kind of worked yourself into a shoot for me. It, it, if I'm not putting this as a main event and I'm not, I'm going to keep it as the women's. I, I still think that the, that the, that the best decision is to have this kick off WrestleMania night one. Um, for multiple reasons. Number one, you know, we've we've heard the tale as old as time. If you're not if you're not going to be the main event, you want to set the tone for the entire show. So they're setting the tone for the entire weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, I think of WrestleMania 35. I said it tonight on 3CT that um, Rollins beating uh, Brock was such an incredible way i get it's obviously much different match than this is going to be but an incredible way to start off that wrestlemania i think this is going to be an incredible way to start off this one um and also like the bloodline losing the tag team titles to to start the show roman reigns now has the next what 28 hours, hours 28 hours yeah to think about the fact that you know it all falls on his shoulders especially after they lose Exa- yeah because it now they don't have the tag titles in the bloodline anymore so the the only titles that remain are his like that that pressure that he's been feeling gets amped up even higher now. So like I think it adds more to the bloodline story to the main event the next night. Like it just it adds everything to everything. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I I said if it's not closing it, I'd start it. Here here it is, boys. Go out there and beat it. Like I said, I think it's going to steal the show one way or the other. Oh. It, it might be the match of the weekend. Yeah. Uh, you give me Wheeler Yuta versus Katsuyori Shibata in a in a pure wrestling rules match. Uh, okay. Might have might have something to come up with. But... No offense to Yuta and Shibuski or whatever the hell you just said. Toyota Sequoia. But WrestleMania weekend, at least for me, like n- there's not another match that's gonna steal a, a, a mania weekend for me. So, but when I say that, I mean it's it's going to steal the WrestleMania weekend. I'm just saying there's a lot of people that are already crowning this match a seven star classic, but guys haven't even gotten the ring yet, and that's fine. I'm just I, saying, I all I'm saying is four guys. I hope I hope it's a seven star match because I, I love all four of these guys. I'm just saying I'm not already coming in like. To, to, to quote, to, um you know, Denny Green, if we're going to crown their asses, let's just crown them already. Like, I'm not going to go ahead oh, and like, crown I mean, it that it's going to be, you know, it has all the potential in the world to be arguably the best tag team match that WWE's put on in, in years, aside from Usos versus Street Profits at Last Year's Money in the Bank. Let's... Yeah, I mean, look, but but if there's four guys that I trust to go out and do it... Yes, with absolutely. That, with that much pressure, I'm 100% comfortable with Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and the Usos who, and this is a discussion for another time, are the Usos the greatest tag team in the history of WWE? And I'm going I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to toss that out there lightly. We can let it fester in your brains for a little bit. Yes. I mean, Tim has already declared Roman Reigns as the greatest WWE superstar in the history of the company, and I'm starting to buy in on it. No. Um. But the Usos, just saying, we're going to have a discussion at a later date, might be the best tag team ever. But, like, yeah, so I, I have – and and I will also say this, even though I'm not putting it as my main event, if this match ends up main eventing, I'm not going to be upset. 
Like, I don't think anybody in the world will be upset if this no, match made no. events. Like, well, there's probably going to be some some people that like like overhype women's wrestling, and I'm not and I'm not if I'm not saying that women's wrestling isn't important or anything because it absolutely is, and I like that the WWE has made it an important piece of their company. Was was last year the first year yes. in recent years where there wasn't a women's main event since we've gone to two nights? Yeah. Wait. Well, 2020 well, 30, 30, 30, 30, 35 Oh no, 36 didn't, but 36 doesn't count. Let's be honest. Uh 36 doesn't count for shit because um you know, night 1 it was main evented by the Boneyard and night 2 was the Drew McIntyre's crowning moment. Right. Um <laughs> With 35, you had the triple threat main event. 37, yep. you had Sasha and Bianca one night. Right. What were the main events last year? Austin night night one was Owen. Austin KO, and night two was Roman oh, versus Brock. Right. So, I mean, okay. like you, it, it, they might have to throw it in the main event just to balance out. Yeah, and, and, and I don't – yeah, it's unfortunate to, like, put it that way, but in a way, it kind of does. And I, and I kind of agree with Mike, too, though, that, like, even though it doesn't explicitly say you get a WrestleMania main event by winning the Royal Rumble. Go back and watch some of those old Rumble packages. It says that you're the main event at WrestleMania. Yeah, but there have been a lot of years where they haven't done I'm that. just saying, there was a like lot when Ray of won, them. Ray, Ray's title match wasn't the main event. I'm just saying, there was a <laughs> lot of video packages that had the, oh, you no, win. I, I agree. I'm just curious what it... Um... So I, I was able to pull up the WrestleMania 35. It said winner receives a championship match. Yeah. Once they started having multiple championships, I guarantee you that's what they changed it to. It went from being a main event match to having a championship match. At the 30 man Royal Rumble match this year. So the men's match said a main event championship match. Um, Shocker. Let's see. I'm just trying to see if I can find the uh, the women's side, the actual like written out rules. Mm -hmm. Um, not on a quick glance, but the fact that the <laughs> men's one said main event, maybe the women's one said that too. So right there, you're, um, yeah, you're 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 you don't really have much of a choice then. If uh, yeah, um, it's contractual. It's it's just one of those things where if we're <laughs> Sorry, if we're gonna do it, I mean, just let's just put oh, it in. Here right we here. go. The, the main this was from uh, this from the graphic from WWE 30 woman Royal Rumble match, and it's for this year. Winner earns main event championship match at WrestleMania Goes Hollywood. So they've, they've been telling us since before the Royal Rumble that it's gonna main event. <laughs> so we'll see. Well, I mean, we'll obviously see if it holds on, but yeah, card subject to change. Oh, always and forever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's uh, let's to, uh, let's go ten matches. Woo! Do I go to my topic next? Pivot right. to Joseph. All right. I feel like it's really easy, and I don't have to explain a lot. Um, That's why you picked it, right? Yeah. All right. WrestleMania is upon us. Storylines really? ending. Really? Would yada, have never yada. have known. I know, right? Uh, Storylines ending. Yada yada yada. In theory, we're entering a whole not, new year. Not Austin. I would love to be entering Austin Theory. I bet you we're would. We're going to be going into a whole new season, essentially. A whole new 52 weeks of WWE. A whole new world. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to get to the next WrestleMania. And I even saw a report. I don't know how legit it is. I don't even remember what it was on. But something said that they already had ideas coming out of this WrestleMania mm -hmm. for, like, storylines to for the next year so my question is and this could be anything this could be anything you want from debuts you know and like realistically like don't be like oh, i want to see mjf debut in wwe like that's not going to happen but if it's someone coming up from nxt or you know even if you mm -hmm. want to throw ftr in there because since there's there's enough rumors about that potentially um anything People you want to see become champions. People you know you want to see move brands. Any any of that kind of stuff. What three things do you want to see happen post WrestleMania in WWE? 
uh, number one, 2023 slash early 2024 is the year of the ring general. I want Gunther in a fucking world title match at WrestleMania next year. So oh, hell yeah. give me give me the ring general um, having a career year. I love that. Um, I will say Jey Uso defeating Roman Reigns in the main event of SummerSlam. Ooh. Not for the title. No. Not for any titles. But just that that's going to be the main event of SummerSlam. Interesting. Okay. I like it. Um, I think mine is a little bit more general. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to get too specific with this one. I'm excited for the next draft, the next brand shakeup. Like, okay, they've other outside of the bloodline storyline and post post Royal Rumble with, you know, Rhea Ripley and Judgment Day and all that. They've done a really good job of keeping the rosters separate since Triple H took over. It, it's not like you're <laughs> fuck. It's not <clears throat> like you're seeing the same people on Mondays and Fridays every single week and they're acting like, oh, this is normal, it's fine. Brand extension only exists, like sorta. This has been a really, really true brand extension, brand split recently. And I think it would be fun now. Now that you've done this for so long, now is the time to move people around. Because now you've got fresh matches. You know, Kerry and Cross, let's send them over to Raw. He hasn't wrestled any of those guys, possibly ever, honestly. And he's kind of exhausted everything he can do. I thought you were going to say send Kerry and Cross to the fucking moon. But like, like, just he's one example. You know what I mean? Like, you can have Imperium go over to Raw as a whole. I would love to see Judgment Day as a whole over on SmackDown. I think they'd be really fun over there. You know, I think if Rio wins the SmackDown Women's Title, there's a real chance that that's going to end up happening anyway. So I'd like to see like kind of a mix like that of some of the talent, so we can get some fresh matches and maybe even some fresh storylines and feuds. Um, number two will be a reunion for myself. Um, we've breathed life into the tag team division. Might as well fucking do it. Give me, uh, give me Johnny and Tommaso. Give me DIY back. Do we have a timeline on Tommaso returning? Um, so I went on his Instagram. Tomato chips. And he was doing like stem cell treatments and stuff like that in Colombia. Okay. Um. So basically, the hip surgery that he had, I guess, was successful. Okay. So now it's just trying to work his way back into getting cleared. So maybe summer. So. I mean, I'd be all for it. Unfortunately, it's not like Johnny Gargano is doing a lot. Like, I mean, he's got that NXT stuff going on, but he's not doing a lot on Raw. So, like... No, he's losing clean to Dominic Mysterio. Right. If this gives him something to do that's exciting... Shit, I w- didn't think I would say out loud in 2023... Johnny Gargano losing clean to fucking Dominic Mysterio. I know it, it, it's it's fucking crazy, but like it also it did make sense. Oh yeah, no, I get it. Wild, it's still fucking wild. You got a second one, Jim? Um, oh, look, I want to see. I want to see the first major. AEW to WWE signing. I don't know who it's even going to be. But some of these early deals are going to come due. Mm -hmm. And I want to see somebody that's been a, a, a relatively large player over the course of the history of that company show up on Raw, be it, you know, the Monday after SummerSlam or something. Does this Cody Rose not count? Well... Yeah, well, I guess you're right. But I mean, I think I feel like Cody doesn't count because we all knew three months before he was showing up that Cody was showing up. Yeah, yeah. Like I want it to be like a surprise. You almost want that shot across the bow that you're not expecting. Really? Like, oh shit! Why is this like, guy here? Like, yeah. 
we 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 kind of saw the progression of Cody exiting AEW, and it, I don't think I don't think it was that surprising. Like I, I understand that right up until the moment that the lights went out in in Dallas last this year. Only has more than one, right? and the music actually hit. Like. I get there was still this like weird trepidation of like is is this is this really happening is this yeah. really happening and then when it did it was awesome but like I don't I don't know that it it had because like it it had legs but it didn't have a hundred percent started the he was one of the guys that started the company but like it to me like MJF or the Bucks or Omega or Orange Cassidy Jungle Boy. He's jungle, a jungle man, sir, jungle man, jungle, jungle man showing up on a Monday on a Monday night raw. Like one of those guys coming over, I feel like would would seem a bigger deal than it's Cody. A sh- Rhodes. It's a shot. To, it's a shot across the the, yeah, the bows. I mean, Cody Rhodes started his career in the WWE, but right. it also, but also a lot of people. Yeah, he started the company. Yeah, he started the company. Yeah, he started the company. Six months before he left, though, it was like. It's very well known that cool you started, but you ain't got fucking anything to do with it. This is fucking right. Tony Khan's. Like they yeah. made it like pretty well known that yeah, like, they made it abundantly clear that like Cody, you true. basically aren't welcome here anymore. Yeah, like they made that like super. Like even a guy like Ricky Starks, let Ricky Skaggs' contract end and, and him show up in front of Ricky WWE. Starks. Like, and, and here's the deal too. Like I don't, I don't know if AEW made his music or whatever, but if you can make something close to that, yeah, and that ish hit like. Monday Night Raw kicks off and fucking Ricky Skaggs pops out with it. Here's the one I'll give you, and I don't. Again, I don't know what his deal is, especially because he spent time out hurt. Hang me in fucking page. You give me, you give me a like, and like, I don't even know if he would work in WWE. I, like, like if it would be beneficial to him or the WWE, but like, I think it'd be beneficial to WWE. I don't know that Hangman Page would fit their style, but well, that's what I, I mean. Like, I don't would. know that he would fit there. I actually but, think like, he would. I don't. I don't. I, I don't know. I, I don't know about his promos. His promos are the only thing that would concern me. Well, see, that's the thing. I think. I think that they could get away with making him the kind of quiet face, like like an actual cowboy. Mm-hmm. Like you don't. He doesn't need to cut promos. No, John Wayne didn't say a needs, whole lot. Of he shit. needs to come in, tip his cap, hit somebody with a fucking buckshot exactly. area, and walk the fuck out. Right. Like think about it. Steve Austin was a fantastic promo. How many times did Steve Austin just come down to the ring, stun somebody, drink a beer, and leave? What? Like, but for real. What? Like, like he, how many times did, was that his response, and he didn't say a single word? hmm You know what I mean? Like, that, like, Hangman could be doing that. Absolutely. I've, I've honestly thought for a while that AEW doesn't know what they're they doing don't. with Hangman. I think WWE this, would actually this, know this what whole to do. Blackpool Combat Club, the elite storyline. Why is, is John Moxley that... a fucking heel? Why is John Moxley a fucking heel? How? Like <laughs> what? What? How? <laughs> How? <clears throat> WrestleMania X seven. WrestleMania X seven gave you the blueprint. For don't turn your fucking best yep. fucking face a heel. Yeah. Because it doesn't work. It also doesn't work whenever you try to turn him in his hometown. For fuck's sake. He's never getting booed. He's never getting booed in <laughs> Houston. Ever. Like I'm watching, like, I'm just like, what are you doing? Oh, that's right. This is the this is the Japanese Tokyo uh, drums for Sting coming out. Sorry. Anyway, that was uh, that was my number two. So give me, give me a, a hang me a page. Give me an OC. Give me Oh, Give gosh. me somebody that somebody's gonna go. What the fuck are they doing here? All right, I got my second one. I think it's finally time. I think they've been building it a little bit in the last couple of months. It was too soon for us this WrestleMania, but I think by next WrestleMania, it's more than doable. I want my Montez Ford singles run. My I man. want it. I need it. I don't know if he's a heel. I don't know if he's a face. I don't know that you need to break up the street profits for it. I honestly even think that'd be kind of cool if maybe they just made a stable out of it where like maybe him and Bianca and Angelo, they all turn heel and he's the, he's the main singles guy going after like the U S title or the intercontinental title. And she's doing her thing in the women's division. 
and you can have Angelo Dawkins as their fucking enforcer who like gets in there when he needs to, but isn't out there like wrestling every week. He could be he could be like the Trey Williams to like Carmelo Hayes, you know what I mean? Trey Williams. Williams. Yeah, I was listen. Uh, but like you know, I mean, he, you could also call somebody up from NXT and pair what? them. That's what I was thinking too. Yeah, like, and then have them I mean, as a I mean, Wes, Wesley, 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 Angelo Dawkins with Montez Ford being the single star. Like, yeah, no, it's a hell of a statement. Sign me up. Like, yeah, you and, could and turn the Street Profits and like, make them heels. Yeah, make you could turn the Street Profits into a stable, and like maybe you give it a different name. Like, better yet, whatever. here you go. Hold on, better yet, let's do it this way. Okay, bring up fucking Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes, and let's just fucking put all four of them together with Bianca. You have Montez go for the world title. You have Trick and Angelo for the tag titles. You have Carmelo fight for the mid card title. And you got Bianca trying to get the fuck women's title back as a heel, as all as heels. Yeah, Melo don't miss. Yeah, and yeah, inevitably I, I it leads to Carmelo lot. Hayes versus fucking uh, Montez Ford for a potential world title at a WrestleMania. Yeah, like I, it's just it's time. He's ready. The act like it would it would freshen up. A lot. It would give a and lot. Dawkins, and Bianca Bianca needs a, Bianca and needs Dawkins needs to first go to paint. And, yeah. I th- and I think Dawkins is good enough in ring that he won't flounder. No, he won't doing singles stuff. Because the thing is, too, like if if, if you put him there have in been this... problems where the second part, like heavy machinery, yeah, good together. Otis could do his thing in the ring. Tucky couldn't. Again. Tucky wasn't a good in ring wrestler. You split them up. You didn't have anything to do with them. I think Angelo Dawkins could hold himself in ring against a lot of people. And I think it, it break up or staying together, but Montez is doing his own thing. I think it helps. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. So that's where I am. Montez Ford is my second one. Give him a push. All right. My third and final thing is going to come back to the money in the bank briefcase. I joked about this last week on the three CT show and immediately made producer Jim almost puke in his hat, which was the fact that I would have had, Austin Theory win Money in the Bank and then cash in and take one of the titles from Cody Rhodes. I've come back on that statement real quick because I've come up with something even better in the brain of Mike Bernier. It stinks! It does stink because this idea makes a lot more sense. Cody Rhodes is inevitably going to lose one of those titles. It's probably going to be the Universal title. And it's probably going to be the man that wins the Money in the Bank ladder match. And that man, ladies and gentlemen, say, say it along with me at home, is L A. Night, yeah. Sign me up. He ain't got to be champion long. Yeah, give me, give me that promo with him coming out with that Uh-oh. fucking blue title belt. Uh-oh. Sign me the fuck up. Oh, oh, I love it. I fucking <laughs> love that. Oh, I love it. Oh, that's so good. That is so goddamn good. I'm not even gonna lie. Oh, it's so perfect. Um, hmm. Man, I wish I would have made that my third one. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> Fuck. Um, I do have an honorable mention that I want to mention at the end. That that. Okay. This is what I want to see. Figure the fuck what you want to do with Bray Wyatt and Alexa Bliss. Oh, God. Yeah. Like. Yeah, if you're going to definitively I, move on and just let Lexi be Lexi, like, just don't let her have the fucking fiend. And also. T's and P's to to Alexa Bliss. She did a reveal this week that she was being treated for skin cancer on her she face. Was on the Masked Singer too. Um, yeah, pretty cool, random, fucking random. But um, so hopefully health wise, she's mm-hmm. she's totally okay. Um, mm-hmm. so uh, but yeah, like I felt like they were kind of moving in this direction of like we're getting like you know evil Bray Bliss back. Yeah. And then like whatever is going on with Bray and like look man, I don't I don't know what's going on with Bray. Um you know there's there's a lot of rumors that it's some sort of health thing. I'm like, not I don't in know. the mood to speculate about it. No, and I'm not I'm not going to sit here um because again, this dude's been through a lot over the last couple of years. Um so whatever it is, I hope he gets right and if and hopefully when he comes back, I hope the WWE figures it out. Um I understand the guy is is somewhat limited. Like he's not gonna, he's not, he's never gonna have a five star fucking classic in Japan. Like he's just, he's not. But like he is one of the greatest characters, and and I've seen the progression watching through these manias from what he came into the WWE and NXT as all the way up till now. He is literally one of the the best characters this company has ever had literally fucking ever 
Um, so just like figure it out, figure out what he, what you want him to be, what he wants to be. And also figure out like Alexa bliss. Cause I think Alexa bliss is one of the most insanely talented women. This company has ever had. She can literally do anything you ask of her, but I just feel like they haven't known what to do with her post, you know, the, 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 the black eyed demon, um, at, the at, you at, fucking pouring out of her mouth at, at, at WrestleMania in Tampa two years ago. How the fuck was that two years ago? Yo, for real, who are you telling? Jesus Christ! How what? That is, that is unbelievable. Okay, anyway, but those, yeah, that's my number three. Figure it out. Just all right. So mine might be a little surprising, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it. This King of the Ring is back, so we're gonna have a king. Honestly. Give me Baron Corbin. Give me another reign as oh, King here Corbin. That. It's the last time That's I fine. actually really enjoyed Baron Corbin. Oh, I loved and I wasn't. I wasn't into Happy Corbin. I wasn't into oh, Sad Corbin. Oh, sad Corbin was great. Oh, oh my God. God. Sad Corbin was you great. Know, you know, my wife. Right I know. My wife, who doesn't even like wrestling, looked forward to seeing what was happening with Sad Corbin. It just. It wasn't my thing. I never found it funny. I never found it entertaining. And I didn't find Happy Corbin any better. And then, like, he's just kind of been floundering since then. Honestly, when he was King Corbin, if if you had told me he was going to win the world title, I'd have been like, yeah, okay. I'm here for it. Like, he can do a short run. Like, he felt like an important character. He felt like he mattered. He was looking great in the ring. Like, everything about that worked. Even... Just the look that he had, like with his tights and all that, worked the best at that point. I think it was the highlight of Baron's career. And honestly, we can make it happen again. You know, we can make Baron Corbin great again. All we have to do is have him win the King of the Ring tournament, which I don't know anybody else who's going to win it. And I don't know anybody else who. L. Oh my God. A. <laughs> Knight. Yeah. So but I'm just saying, like, yeah, it, it, it would be cool to see him actually get a push because otherwise, I fear Baron Corbin might be eventually going just the way of Baron Corbin versus Powerhouse Hobbs for the TNT title. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my God! Please, the Baron Corbin win a title in AEW. Bar- <laughs> Barrister Corbin fucking taking on Will Hobbs. Also, yeah. I hope Tony Khan on some fucking coke binge realizes how much he wants a, a Goldberg. In, yep. in AEW, I yep. want uh, look, look. Then he can kick MJ he- MJF's head off, and we can have MJF versus Bret Hart in a fucking Bill Goldberg stroke match. My God, <laughs> look! Fuck you. <laughs> um, and he is just making WCW. Sting is there. Jarrett's there. Kevin Nash will be there in forty five minutes with his blown quad. Just give him a minute. He's got to get there. Look, man, uh, and I'm being one hundred percent honest about this. The, the three people that I want to see wrestle in AEW this year. Bill Goldberg. Are Bill Goldberg <laughs> and Nikki and Brianna Garcia. Because if there are three people that I have watched the, 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 par- the portion of the internet wrestling community that helped create AEW shit on for the better part of the last decade in WWE, it has been Bill Goldberg, and I've been part of that group. But Bill Goldberg, <laughs> no, and the don't Bella, say. And, I know, right? Shocking. And the Bella Twins, because they said they stink. They take people's spots and blah 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 blah. And I want to watch these fucking mouth breathers on a Wednesday night. Fucking tell me how great. A Garcia Twins match is, and how awesome that jackhammer was. I, I inject it into my fucking veins because I will call out every single one of them and be like, this is what you people killed the I got WWE bitches. for for fucking years. And now you love it because it's on Wednesday. Facts. I'm sorry. Fucking, I, I love Sting. Sting. no selling fucking attacks by the butcher and the blade and then getting the fucking pin in that six-man tag 
first off, Sting being in a six man tag would have been killed in the WWE. Mm-hmm. The number of six man tags that AEW does would get killed in the WWE. And then a 63 year old man pinning it like an up and comer, like a homegrown talent dude would have been murdered in the WWE. Mm-hmm. But because on Wednesday night is cool. Yep, exactly. Like, fuck you. Stupid. I cannot wait till Bill Goldberg. I can't wait to see the Goldberg entrance on an AEW dynamite. I cannot fucking wait. He just takes out a security guard, kicks them oh, in the head. Fucking be awesome. dead. Be one of the greatest moments of my wrestling. Um, my my two honorable mentions that I have, uh Brian Danielson wrestling in the G1 climax. Uh sign me up for that. Nice. Number two, Jay Uso wins a singles title so that he can prove that you know main event Jay is a fucking boss. Um, I mean, let's be honest, Jay Uso may win one of the world titles this year. That's very possible. Like, I would not be mad at that. I could I, I, I could see him I, I, I could see all. I could see LA Knight beating Cody for one of them and then him beating LA Knight. And like let's be honest too, like Jay Jimmy Uso and Toyota Sequoia. And go for the tag titles. The fact that we, the fact that between three CT and take three, we have well, two cars. Well, as like names. Brian, we got Jeep Brian Wagoneer. <laughs> we got Toyota Sequoia. What the fuck oh are we God, doing? Make a Toyota Sequoia shirt in like the, <laughs> the fucking the fucking uh, the, the Carmine font. <laughs> that's one. Of the, okay, that's an idea. That's a fucking idea. I just got to figure out how to make it happen. Oh my God. We the Toyota Sequoias. <laughs> you guys want to jump into... Uh... Sorry, I can't breathe. You guys want to jump into the bracket? Yeah, let's get to Mike's topic before I sidebar again. We are Toyota. Toyota Sequoia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 41 main events have, have been entered into the bracket. Um, the east half of the bracket, or the northeast half of the bracket, uh, which is the top left if you're following along at home, if you printed out your own 41 thing bracket. Um, we'll start there. 32 seed versus the 33 seed. Uh, the 32 seed is the main event from WrestleMania 27. Which was, as I'm scrolling there right now, that was The Miz versus John Cena. That was the first WrestleMania that myself and Joe went to. Okay. It is going up against the main event from three, uh, two years later, or no, three years later. Uh, it was WrestleMania 29, the second Rock versus John Cena match where The Rock basically blew out every part of his oh. fucking leg. Uh, Joe, I'll let you have the first vote here. Majority rules, obviously, in these in, in these with the three of us. So I'll let the two of you vote. And if it goes to a tie, uh, I'll vote unless there's one that I'm like distinctly like dropping the hammer on. So I guess Rock Cena, but damn, that was shitty. That's why they're the 32 and the 33. Seed. Yeah, yeah, both of these things. I'm, go, I'm gonna go with that one. Rock Cena too. All right, so 29 moves on. I would have voted Rock Cena as well. Um I more or less just put the Miz one because it was our first WrestleMania as the higher seed. Uh, the twenty, the twenty-four seed is the main event from WrestleMania eighteen, which is Chris Jericho versus Triple H. It's going up against uh, the worst WrestleMania m- main event of all time: Bam Bam Bigelow versus Lawrence Taylor from WrestleMania eleven. I don't necessarily know that we really need to have a conversation about this, or we just. Yeah, Jericho Triple H. Just moving, Come on. Just moving that on. Okay. Just want to, I, I, I want to be I want to be fair. I, you know, I would have voted the other way. I'm just gonna uh okay, cool. I would have broken the tie. We would have went to WrestleMania 18. Anyways, uh the 20 oh the 25 seed is the WrestleMania 4 main event, the culmination of the title tournament. Randy Macho Man Savage versus Ted DiBiase. It's taking on the 40 seed, which is the main event from WrestleMania 9. I make that match Brett versus Yoko. I don't include the post-match shenanigans, even though it technically was a match. Um, Fuck you, Hulk. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And your stupid black eye. Joseph? What was it again? DiBiase Savage from 4 or Brett Yoko from 9. 
Good lord. Um, <laughs> yeah, these this early this early part of the bracket is hot doo doo. I guess WrestleMania four. Yeah, I'm going four. There's no way. I'm yeah, if you if you would have voted nine and Jim would have taken four, I would have. I was still would have, we would have moved That's, four along. This it's is painful. We're 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 starting with all the play in games. So now in the bottom left half of the bracket, uh, it is the 29 seed WrestleMania 38 Night Two Main Event, um, Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. I put this one as low as I did because the injury to Roman Reigns basically ended this match before it yeah, got out of yeah. third gear. Yeah, it's a disappointing one. Um, it's going up against the 36 seed, which is the main event from WrestleMania number two, which was Hogan, Hogan, Hogan and Bundy, Bundy in the cage. Cool. Yeah, I'll take a fucking injured Brock Lesnar any day. Give me Brock Lesnar's head fucking rolling down to the ring and yeah. wrestling fucking Zach Gowan. That's a better match than that fucking Hogan Bundy match. Dude, that, that Hogan match was Bundy was shit. hot dude too. Every time I every time I hear a Bundy, I just I just think of something to wrestle. Bundy, you're stealing the Monday from the promoter Bundy. <laughs> thing sucks. Yeah, give um, me, give me. It uh, annoys me because we have on our on our menu at work we have a fish called Barramundi, mm-hmm. and every time anyone orders it, all I hear in my head is Barramundi. Bundy, <laughs> stealing money, Bundy. It's also really gross. Don't eat it. Ugh. All right, main event. Uh, I'm sorry for the bottom half, of the final playing game. The 28 seed is the WrestleMania 32 main event which is Triple H versus Roman Reigns from Dallas. Uh, its counterpart is the main event from the f- next year. Fuck you, Roman Reigns versus Undertaker. Oh. That is the 37 seed for those of you playing along at home. I remember enjoying the Undertaker match better than the Triple H match. Uh, oh, no, give me, give me Triple H, Roman. Ooh, yeah, uh, neither one of those matches is a good match. Why do you think they're in the playing games? Yeah, it wasn't wasn't great, but man, that dude Taker that Undertaker Roman match is just Whoa. like the drizzling shits. Taker was rough. Yeah. Ooh. All right, let's go to the top Back. half of the yeah top half of the bracket, the right side. Uh, the playing game here. The thirty-one seed is WrestleMania twenty-eight, which was the first Rock versus John Cena. It's going up against the main event from WrestleMania 13, which is, I believe it was Taker Sid. Mm. Yes, Taker Sid for the title. No, I'm going to go Roxena. Dude, that first Roxena match was really good. I watched that the other day. Yeah. And man, it, that match was better than it should have been. Oh, that, I, that I agree with. Roxena. Um, next up, the second play in game on that side of the bracket. It is the 26 seed, which is the main event from WrestleMania 25, which was the Triple H Randy Orton match uh, from 2009. You think that's bad? It's going up against the Fatal Four Way with a McMahon in each corner between The Rock, Triple H, Big Show, and Mick Foley from WrestleMania 2000. Jesus Buddy, I told you these. It, it's so comical how bad some of these fucking main events are. Oh, my God. I'm not taking the four way. All right. Yeah, yeah. Triple H Orton. Well, it's it's not good. Yeah, um, <laughs> McMahon in every corner match was so fucking bad. Oh, <laughs> all right. So the bottom right half of the bracket is the thirty versus thirty-five seed. It is WrestleMania number one. Hogan and Mister T versus Piper and Orndorff. Their challenger. Is Sergeant Slaughter versus Hulk Hogan from WrestleMania 8? Oh, you know what? Having watched both of them recently, I'll take WrestleMania 1. I'm going to take Hogan Slaughter because this was the first Mania I ever watched. So that this one holds a special place. Um, Just because it's the first Mania to get moved and probably one of the other manias, one of the only manias that'll ever be moved. I'm going to take WrestleMania eight because Sergeant Slaughter couldn't sell out the LA Coliseum. Um, seven. Was it seven that got moved? I thought it was eight. that got moved. Seven. Oh, fuck that. Then I'm going to WrestleMania one. Then fuck me. Don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just wanted to crack a joke on Sergeant Slaughter. Look at yeah, WrestleMania seven. one moves on. Uh, all right. Speaking of WrestleMania seven, that's the 38 seed. Good segue boys. Let's like, I just, I wrote it up. Um, 
That was Wait, slow, I no. the one we just Hogan played. versus Hogan. Hogan, Hogan, Hogan Sid. Sid. Hogan Sid. Hogan. It was my fault. It was Hogan Sid from eight at the Hoosier Dome versus versus WrestleMania one. Oh no! See, I'm voting Hogan Sid. I love. Yeah, that. I'd go Hogan Sid in okay. that matchup. Yeah, that's, Fine. that's a different. That's different. Okay. Nope, you're good. My bad. I I read it wrong. My bad. I saw it when you started saying that. The third, like, okay, wait, the thirty eight seed. Good segue, boys. R- Sergeant Slaughter is the thirty eight seed. Okay. Um, now we're back fuck, on fuck, fuck that match. Um, they're going up against the main event from WrestleMania twenty two, which was John Cena versus Triple H. I'll take Cena and Triple H. I'm still gonna go Hogan Slaughter, man. It wasn't a great match, but it's it's special to me. Uh, yeah, we're going. We're going Cena versus. That's Triple fair. H. Yeah, I did that because I figured. All right, so the the full bracket is now. We have the thirty two that are in the the top half of the, the the full brackets. All right, so let's go back to the upper half. The one seed, the match that I ranked as the favorite to win this tournament. It was WrestleMania five. It was the Mega Powers exploding. It was Hogan versus Savage. Taking on the winner of the play-in game, WrestleMania 29's main event. Um, again, for those of you somehow fast forward to the middle of the show, Rock versus John Cena, uh, part D. What was it? Mega Powers versus Rock Cena, part two. Um. Yeah, you guys vote. Um. I really feel like that means that you don't want to fucking vote for the Mega Powers. <laughs> I'll go Mega Powers. I'll go Mega Powers. Yeah, I am too. The second Rock Cena just with, with Rock blowing out every fucking part of his yeah, leg, like, it, and it like the first match was so good. Yeah, there was no there was no getting back there to was that level. No reason. There was no re- like besides printing money. There was no reason to do the second one. Uh, he, he ain't lying. Um, all right, the 16 versus 17 matchup. Hey, the, the 16 seed is uh, WrestleMania 10's main event, which is Brett right. versus Yoko yeah. round two. Yeah. Part D. As we as we so declared, uh, the first time we've ever seen um, uh, main, event. main event two years in a row. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. It's going up against the night two main event from WrestleMania 37, where Roman Reigns stacked him, smashed him, blasted him, oh. fucking... Destroyed them. The triple threat match. So easy. So the triple threat match. Acknowledge me. Yeah, look, I love Brett, but it's not a good match. And you're working Yoko. It's not a good match. No. All right. Uh, The nine seed is the WrestleMania three main event. Hogan Andre. Hogan Andre. It takes on the WrestleMania 18 main event. Uh, Mania 18 main event. That was was, uh, Triple H Jericho. Jericho Jericho, Triple H. H. Yeah. Um, for its place in history, I'm gonna go Hogan Andre. Um, I'm gonna go Triple H Jericho because that match was great in a bad spot, um, but still great. Uh, I'm with Joe for just for the nostalgia reason. I'm Fair. gonna go with the slam of of Andre. Uh, the winner of the other playing game from that bracket is the main event from WrestleMania Four. Macho and Macho DiBiase. Yeah. It takes on the main event from WrestleMania 14. Oh, 14 would have been Stone Cold versus Sean with Mike Tyson yeah. as the enforcer. Oh, for those of you scoring at home, that's the eight seed. I'm gonna go with that one again for kind of historical importance. Yeah, that, that that's that that's the beginning of the rise of really the beginning of the true rise of Austin. Yeah. All right, so that's the upper left half of the bracket. Lower lower half of the bracket, the four seed, which is the main event from WrestleMania 31, Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, with the heist of the century being involved in that situation. Uh, it takes on the winner of the playing game, WrestleMania 38, Night Two, which was the injured Roman Reigns Brock Lesnar match. Uh, it's the heist of the century. Heist of the century. I just I just finished that mania earlier first off that whole fucking mania still stacks up i have it on right now i have it on right now of the best of all time well i like top five to me i think it was it was real good but yeah heist of the century all right the 13 seed is the wrestlemania 37 night one main event between sasha banks and bianca belair they take on the main event from wrestlemania 24 edge versus undertaker that is the 20th seed oh 
What was it? Sasha. Sasha and Bianca from 37 Night 1 in Tampa versus Edge and Taker from that, this 24. This is a hard one. Edge and Taker is a really good fucking yeah, match. Yeah, it was a good match. But Bianca and Sasha might have had the best women's match at WrestleMania period ever. So I, I'm going uh, I'm going to go Sasha Bianca for that reason. Um I am too. And and also because you know we we've tied a lot of historic ones into this. Mm-hmm. Um that one certainly That historic. one's a lot of history, oh, yeah. A lot of history, so I'm going to go Bianca and Sasha. All right. So that being said, that is probably arguably one of the top 10 best WrestleMania matches of all time. Too. Mm-hmm. The 12 seed. Um it is the main event from WrestleMania 26. It is Streak versus Career. Taker versus Sean. It's going up against the main event from WrestleMania 21, which was Triple H versus Batista. That's a fucking good match, also. Man, like, like yeah, like, <laughs> you know, like, like Undertaker Sean wins, but that that Triple H Batista match is actually a great. It might be one of Triple H's best Mania matches. Yeah, yeah, it, it's really good, but I mean, it's it's Taker Sean, man. Yeah. Uh, winner of the play-in game from that half of the bracket, the bottom side, the thirty WrestleMania 32 main event, it takes on the main event from WrestleMania 12. Uh, 12 was Brett, Sean, and the Iron, Iron Man, Man match. Who's it against? Uh, WrestleMania 32, which is Triple H, Roman World. Triple H. Oh, it's, uh, Iron. I, I feel dirty, but Iron Man match. <laughs> yeah! I'm not even going to give Mike the chance. It's the no, Iron I was I was going to pick the Iron Man match anyways. It's the five seed. I have it as the fifth best main event in WrestleMania history. I mean, in my pre rankings, like I'm not going to pick it. I'm not going to pick that, that. I mean, it was so good that they did an encore of it at the last AEW pay per view. So. That's true. He ain't lying. Like, <laughs> all right, the two, it's the, like doing a revival of Rent. Like Jesus. you already know it works. So. Just get out there and sing about Seasons of Love. Uh, this might be one of the easiest uh, matchups, I think, that we'll run into in this entire thing. Kill Ronda Rousey? Uh, no. Close. Uh, number two seed is the Boneyard match. Thir- uh, WrestleMania 36, night one. It goes up against the winner of the play-in game, which was WrestleMania 28. For the- I know you guys are both homers for the Boneyard match, so go ahead. Boneyard. I mean, you're taking you're taking Rock Cena one over the Boneyard match. I mean, look, uh, Rock Cena one's so good, but it's a good match. But I don't know that it's better. I than have that. Boneyard I have in to, my top five I WrestleMania to matches. I think I have to go back and rewatch the Boneyard match. Like I don't know that I appreciate it to the level I, you guys do. And here's the thing: I hold it. it it's that WrestleMania, especially that match. Like it's first off. Is the best way the Undertaker could have ended his career at that point. And like I I put myself back into into how I felt like that year at that time. Like everything was so fucked up. Everything was so fucked up. And literally for two nights, I felt even the slightest bit normal. Right. Because I was watching WrestleMania. And like I didn't because I was staring at one big fan. <laughs> like I I had stepped away from three CT like we didn't do a show for like three weeks. Oh wow! Was just, like I was just so fucked up with everything going on, and Matt and Ryan were doing a, like a preview show, like a prediction show, the day of night one, mm. uh, with a couple like friends of the show, and I was like, you know what, fuck it, like I'll just I'll just kind of hop on, and like it just felt so good to like just talk to my friends again. And talk wrestling, and like then we started doing the show again. Like I don't, I don't know, I don't know what if I'd still be podcasting really at this point if it wasn't if it wasn't for that and that mania. So, like I think I think I hold it in a special place be, because of all of that. Um, but I also like fuck. I just thought it was really incredible. Right. Done. All right, the 15 seed is the WrestleMania 17 main event between Rock and Austin. We talked about it a little bit with the uh, heel turn of the century. So we think uh, it goes up against John Cena and Shawn Michaels from WrestleMania 23. All right. It's not even the best Shawn Michaels and John Cena match. And I think that the rock Austin match is possibly one of the best of all time. So 17. Yeah. Give me, give me rock Austin, but, but both matches strong candidates. 
The Rock Austin match may be one of the best matches, but I think the finish kills. I still I liked it. I, I know I'm crazy. I know I'm in the minority. I I think it's it. not even it's not even the finish. Because like Austin doing the heel turn thing to win the title, if Austin would have actually done what he wishes he would have done and given McMahon the finger and give and stun him after the fact to basically be like, haha, motherfucker, now I got your title. Like I played you. Like that would have that would have made it fantastic. It's the fact that like Austin saying like he kind of had this thought where he's like, I should just stun him. This isn't gonna work, but he didn't do it. Like I feel like if they pull that off at any other like WrestleMania, I think it goes over fucking I guess I don't think he's ever getting booed in the state of Texas. Here's, here's no. my thing though. For all I, I get I get all of the thought and all of the theory behind turning Austin heel at that time was a mistake. I get all of it. And I don't even know how much I appreciated all of this at the time as much as I do now, but I I mean it if they didn't turn him heel and we didn't get all of the stuff with him and Kurt Angle and, and we didn't get like, you know, like them singing and like the, the fucking little hats and, you know, the milk truck. And we, if we didn't get all of that, if we didn't get even like at the beginning when we got like the two man power trip with him and Triple H, like that was really good stuff until Triple H got injured, you know. Like, there's a lot of stuff that we got because they turned him heel that I really am a big fan of that we never would have gotten if they didn't. You got, you got to take a chance sometimes, you know what I, I mean? I don't, I'm not disagreeing with you, but taking the chance in the place where he's never getting booed is the is where I have, like, turn him fucking three weeks later in fucking Santa Fe, New Mexico, where people will fucking boo him. Turn him at SummerSlam. I don't give a shit. Like, he's never getting booed in Texas. That's like going to Hawaii and being like, yeah, they're going to boo a Samoan. Uh, all right, the 10 seed, WrestleMania 6, Hogan versus Warrior. It takes on the WrestleMania 35 main event. Um, that was the triple the threat match. Triple threat, Ronda. Ronda, Becky, Charlotte. Um, I picked a match that had two guys, or two people that couldn't wrestle in Ronda Rousey and the Ultimate Warrior. You're welcome. <laughs> I Give me the women's triple threat. I almost want to know why now at this point. Wasn't like, it the first woman the main event match? It was. Wasn't? It was, but it was. that but that match just wasn't good. I yeah, know that, that's I what makes that it so hard. Warrior was exactly. But hard. you but but you built that for like fuck this this is years. this is a harder matchup than it should be. I'm because... I'm okay. Here, let's do this then, Jim. I'm taking fucking Hogan Warrior. I, I'll, you're gonna fucking decide the thing Fuck. of this fucking side of the bracket because at Fuck. the end of the day, um, and it has nothing to do with quote Ron, me my despise of Ronda Rousey because I don't like the Ultimate Warrior either. Let's fucking be fair here. Um, but that was supposed to be the passing of the torch moment. So as much as like oh, you, know, you know, we got all the cool stuff with Austin whenever he went heel. Like that was supposed to be Hogan fucking passing the torch, and then Hogan was like, you know, I don't really know that I want to pass the torch, and then fucking Warrior turned out to be a fucking idiot. Well, dude, like it, it, this is tough because like the women's one is really historic and it has Correct. such a great moment Absolutely. With, with Becky Lynch winning, but the match itself stank. The the and it was at the end of like a seven and a half hour long wrestle. Trust me, I remember. I, I was and, wearing a New York Jet jersey. And but like Hogan Warrior, my God, like you had two guys that were terrible wrestlers and they had a great match. Oh fuck! You could do it. WrestleMania thirty-five. Oh god, go take a shower. Oh, I hate it. You're both dead to me. I fucking hate it. I hate you're, it. You're so both much. fucking dead to me. Oh. Uh, nah, five. Five. Okay, let's do it. I was going to say, because we're going to power through it regardless. So I'm not going to finish and not finish the right, bottom yeah. right side of the bracket. Yeah, we, like got, we, got this. we got this. Uh, WrestleMania 25, which won the play-in game. It takes on the main event from WrestleMania 15. Uh, for those of you scoring along the at Rock home, Austin that's match. Rock Austin, first one. Yeah. 
Oh, wait, who's it playing up against? Uh, with Mankind as a special guest referee. Uh, it goes up against 25, which was the winner of the play-in game. Uh, that was Edge versus, nope, Triple H versus Randy Orton. Ooh. But that, but yeah, because that beat WrestleMania 2000. It went up against fucking yeah. Linda, Shane, Steph, and yeah, Vince. I still don't feel like either one of these is very good. I mean, there there are legitimate the people that argue that WrestleMania 15 was the better of the three. Rock, really? Austin, yeah. There's people that fucking want to die on that hill. I'm not one of them, but there no, are people that it's, want to. It's a good bet. I, I'll start. I'll start us all. I'll go, I'll go Rock Austin. I mean, there, there are people that want to die on that hill. That it's 50. Well, they're they're wrong. Hill. They're wrong. Oh, 100. percent they're wrong. I'm the taking 15 is because... between 19 and 17. Correct. I, I'm taking 15, um, more or less because it was Rock and Austin's first WrestleMania main event. Yeah. And the fact that 25, it just to me is kind of doo doo. Yeah. All right. The three seed is the main event from WrestleMania 19. It's Kurt Angle versus Brock Lesnar. It takes on the main event from WrestleMania 8, which is Hogan versus Sid that won the play in game. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> give me, uh, give me, uh, Angle and Brock. <sighs> give me a uh, shorty, shorty shooting star plus shooting star press, uh, Brock. <laughs> yeah. See, no one almost broke their neck in Hogan versus Sid. I'm just saying. The fact that you're like grinning like a three year old school child. I knew he was going to do it. How he was, great he was that so match is. Telling that, that, that the other so day in the group. That match was that as was bad. So that match weird. was as bad as Hogan versus Warrior. No, it two guys that can't work in the ring that had a good match. No, Welcome to WrestleMania. Warrior was so good. It's yeah. the most mind-boggling fucking match of WrestleMania history. They had no business being good. Exactly. Well, it's like something like two wrongs make a right. Kind of. <laughs> No, like it is. It's like it's no, like it is. When, like that's, that's honestly what Hogan Warrior was. It's like when when lesbian scissor. All right, the 14 nothing, seed is wrong about that. By the way, yeah, WrestleMania 20. It's uh, Triple H, HBK, and Bowflex. Mm. Uh, it it's going up against Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar from WrestleMania 34. I'm trying. I don't even remember what Roman Wait, Reigns 34 Brock Lesnar was. Match that was. 34, 34 was, was New Orleans. The second New Orleans. Was that a is good one? Is this when somebody got hard weighed? Uh, that I don't remember. Somebody got hard weighed in that match. I, I'm not going to lie to you. It's the 14-19. It's, the it's supposed to be a close game. I'm taking the triple threat match. Chris Benoit, horrible human being. Fucking, yeah. We've talked about yeah, it a lot. You can't, you can't deny match. history, man. That that match was just yeah. too good. Like, I mean, that was real I, fucking I, good. Honestly, I literally don't remember... Anything special about that Roman Brock match? Yeah, yeah. I, look, yeah. It's it's again. They it's, all kind it's of blend together at some point. He ain't lying. What if they wrestled four times at WrestleMania? Uh, they've been involved in I think four of them. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, the next matchup is the 11 seed, which is the culmination of the S movement. It's Daniel Bryan winning the triple threat match against Orton and Batista. It's taking on the WrestleMania 36 Night 2 main event, which is Brock Lesnar versus Drew McIntyre. If it wasn't a pandemic, it probably would have been. Yep, I'm with Jim. Yes, yes, movement. Yeah, dude, the storytelling in that fucking match. My God. Chef's kiss. Uh, The sixth seed and the last uh, round of 32 matchup is the WrestleMania 38 Night one main event stone cold steve austin versus kevin owens it's going up against the play-in game winner which was the main event of wrestlemania 22 which again for those of you at home that are following along that is john cena versus the rock uh triple h wait what was the cena triple h versus what austin austin owens 38 38 night one i'm going austin owens yeah, it may be recently biased, but I'm going off to Owens, man. That was such a fucking blast. Yeah, that was just fun. All right, so on next week's show, we're down to the final 16. The upper left side of the bracket is going to be WrestleMania 5 versus WrestleMania 37 Night 2 main event. Uh, we got WrestleMania 3 versus WrestleMania 14 to round out that bracket. 
the next bracket, it's WrestleMania 31 versus uh, WrestleMania 37 Night 1. Uh, and then it's WrestleMania 26 versus WrestleMania 12. And then we have WrestleMania uh, 36 Night 1 takes on WrestleMania 17. 35 takes on 15. And then the bottom half of the right side of the bracket, it's 19 versus 20 and 30 versus 38 Night 1. Beauty. So we'll rip through that um, on next week's show, basically, when Ernest is here. Uh, all right, wrestles of the week, so that Joe can go to bed because he's literally about to fall the fuck asleep sitting next to me. Yeah. We probably could have gotten down to the final four, but Joe Joe wants to go take a nap. So uh, I'm gonna go first this week because fuck it, that's why. I wanna go first. For you went first last week. I didn't go first last week. I've been going first since we fucking changed but formats. I have an answer. I swear to God, I'm going to wake you up every five minutes of our flight just so you can fucking grip the fucking arm of the fucking chair as hard as humanly possible. Nobody wants that. No, see, here's the thing. I'll act like I don't fucking know you. You're not sitting next to me. You're sitting at the aisle. I'm sitting in the window. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. I'll wait. Look, I'm never prepared for these. I have a name. Who the hell is this? Exactly. Do you want want, want my name? Leroy Jenkins? (laughs) <laughs> I wish. Alright, I'm gonna take the first pick. I'm stealing it. I'm hijacking it. I mean I'm I would say I'm surprised, but that would be disrespectful right. of surprises. Uh m- m- <laughs> Masha Slamovich. So you took who you know GFC. I had so you so you took my pick from three C T who was the people's choice. I just the new G C W world champion. All right. See, I was ready. Great. Uh, Jim, feel free. Um, I'm going to go with more of a personal one. Uh, it is Tim's best friend. Oh, uh, it is a friend of mine. Uh, the new Virginia Championship Wrestling Heavyweight Champion, the Boar. Uh, it the, was- the proletariat Boar of Moldova? Yeah, it was, it was the first... It was Tim and his and his best friends like first uh first indie company that they like went to a show at as mm. fans. And uh and he is the new champion there, so it's a special one. Um you big softy. <laughs> Ugh nobody else really did shit this week, right? Michael, give me. I feel like people won stuff. New Ooh. impact knockout tag what champion. About yeah, I guess. Give me, give me, give me the Craven. Give me uh the Coven. Yeah, that one. The Craven. Quote the Raven. Quote never the more. Raven? What the fuck am I doing here? Quote, quote the Craven. Never more. What the Craven? What the fuck? I mean, I might as well do something stupid. Um, For the record, that's uh, Taylor Wilde and Kaylin King, right? Yeah. Hey, at least I got the two members of it, right? I did something right. There we go. Good job. Yay, me. Joseph. Who won the main event of Dynamite last night? Uh, finger, finger bang McTwinkle Toes. Oh, that's right. He fought El... Twinkle like, Toes McFinger oh, bang. No, bang. No, 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 no. Give me Sonata. He won the New Japan Cup. Okay. That's not me. Oh fuck! Right. Give um, me... uh, Jim can pick Twinkle Toes. <laughs> fuck that! I don't think he's taking Twinkle Toes McFinger Bang. Oh, fuck no! Um, and I'm not gonna point when I do it either. Um, <laughs> give me. Uh, he is the uh, the head honcho at the world famous Monster Factory in Paulsboro, mm-hmm. New Jersey. Danny Cage. Uh, they have a, a documentary series on Apple TV Plus uh, that is super cool. Uh, Danny's always been good to us. We've had numerous Monster Factory students uh, on 3CT. Um, actually, Gabby Ortiz, who's in the in the show, was our guest, one of our guests at uh, the Icons convention this past weekend. So, um, mm-hmm. Danny Cage, they've, they've always been great with us. So, um, kudos to him. All right. My last one because I fucking don't know who else to go with here. Uh, you know what? No, I'm not taking fucking 
Kenny McDude. I'm not taking Kenny McChicken Nuggets. Stop. I would rather take Tiffany Stratton for winning her way into a ladder match at Sand and Deliver because she is an athlete, unlike Twinkle Toes Stop. McFinger Bang. Page. All right. And then I have Tiffany Stratton. All right. So I don't think, does it make a difference? No, because it would have been the 31st, anyways. I was, talking, I was trying to think about next week. I'm like, we're picking like not on the first of April because like it, we that technically would have been the end of the month, but the thirtieth, thirty first, it doesn't matter. We still would have been for this month. So uh, one more week for the month of March, and then we'll get that vote on. So hey, the winners of WrestleMania will uh, definitely be the nominees for the first week of April. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So let's go ahead and pencil in the winner of both women's titles, the the world title, the tag titles, and probably the winner of fucking Seth Rollins versus Logan Paul. Something like that. Unless something crazy happens. All right. Twinkle Toes makes sleepy head over here is going to bed. So I guess let's wrap this thing up. Jim, plug uh, away. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, I'll make it real simple at Three Count Thursday, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, you can get the show, uh, hit the link tree there or on all podcast platforms, YouTube. Um, we have uh, a really fun uh, WrestleMania week coming up on the Tuesday podcast as well as on the Thursday live show and then the uh, Tuesday after. So make sure you, uh, you don't miss that huddle up podcast. We have uh, all the great shows on the feed. We are going to be recording some uh, huddle up off season content this upcoming week. So don't miss that at huddle up podcast on Facebook and Twitter. Hit the link tree there. Discussions with the nobody going to try to get something recorded over the next few days. Um, I got a pretty busy schedule, but I'm going to try to get an episode down. So at DWAN pod on Twitter at and uh, Facebook.com slash discussions with a nobody. And the Garcias. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at They Call Me Burn. You can follow the show at Take the Number Three Wrestling. Uh, I am part of Huddle Up Incorporated. Um, eventually, going to get a new hockey show up. There really hasn't been a lot to talk about, especially with the Capitals free falling. Yeah, it's, um, it's been weird. So it's kind of like been kind of status quo. That's why I really haven't done one in the last couple of weeks, just because there really hasn't been much to talk about. But I uh, do have something to talk about now with Fanatics taking over the official jerseys oh. of. Um, the National Hockey League, so we'll talk about that a little bit um, on, on an upcoming Can't wait episode. To see the Catapults playing in a couple of years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> By the way, I still love the fucking Cherry Blossom jerseys. Oh, they're so good. So good. Um, otherwise, uh, show next week will be recorded on Wednesday. We'll probably drop on Thursday. Ernest should be with us for that show. That'll be our uh, final show leading into WrestleMania. I will probably chime in from the comments on the 3CT stuff while we're in beautiful California because that's what I do. Um, But other than that, guys, we appreciate you as always hanging out with us. We love you guys. We'll see you guys next week uh, for a special Wednesday edition of the Take Three Wrestling Podcast. Until then, stay safe. We love you. Good night.